everybody. My name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Mode. And today on Hot Mode, we are coming to you with a fashion roast and review for the very first time of the NMAC Gala. Now the NMAC Gala stands for the Nita Mukesh Ambani Cultural Center and it is a cultural center and hub that is based in Mumbai in India. And it opened, I believe, for the first time. And so this gala is a way for Mumbai, for Nikita Mukesh Ambani and the Cultural Center of India to sort of bring themselves out into the world. And it was a star-studded affair. I mean, like you had the best from Hollywood and Bollywood coming together for red carpets that were intriguing and beautiful and pretty and wonderful and gorgeous. A lot of you guys wanted me to talk about it, so I was like, sure, let's get into it. I will preface this video with I am not an expert in like Indian cultural dress, so I just would like to put it out there. As the NMAC gala goes on, I'm sure that things will happen, I will learn, I'll become a lot more sort of cultured in Indian textile and Indian dress. But as of right now, very novice level, but I still want to talk about it because I think it's fun. I think as we talk about things we learn, that's why I really want to do it. Now, I also want to give a little bit of context for a lot of Western viewers like myself didn't really know or don't really know a lot about NMAC. Now, NMAC, as I said, already stands for Nita Munkesh Ambani Cultural Center, the five. Now, from my reading, Nita Mukesh Ambani is a philanthropist. She's somebody that is sort of very much so pushing for India to be seen as a cultural center and a cultural hub. It already is, but I think on a world stage, she wants it to sort of be seen that way as it should be. And so she's opened this cultural center that will provide experiences and exhibitions on like culture, on costume, on different sort of performance arts of India. Now, I did do some research. Her husband, Mukesh Ambani, is a big billionaire with Bay. For all of you wondering, that's sort of where this money is coming from. It's a philanthropy sort of thing. And I believe that the gala element, this is my understanding, is it was trying to sort of push the fact that there's a really big sort of fashion exhibition coming out called India in Fashion. It is going to look at different sort of Indian designers that we've heard of, like Rahul Mishra and Manish Arora, as well as a bunch of other Indian designers, and then sort of juxtaposing them against different Western designers like Dior, Balenciaga, Chanel, that sort of showcases the difference in the way that Indian textile and Indian dress has been interpreted both from its home country and and from outside sort of sources. So it's cool. I'm not gonna be able to go to the exhibit because I tore my ACL, so apologies, but we're gonna get into this red carpet now. I just wanted to give context, okay? First up, we have Aliyah Bhatt, and she is wearing Ellie Saab. Now this is a strapped full ball gown. It's fully embroidered. There's a heart or infinity-like detail right at the sort of sternum area that sort of then flows out into different rays. You can see that there's silver and gold sort of embellishments that run down. The dress has a little sort of waistband, subtle. And then that sort of front skirt flows all the way down in those little panels that have little strips that are sort of sectioned off by the embroidery. And then from the back, we have a sort of long flow Flowing opaque fabric that comes out and creates sort of a wider, more dramatic sort of train. And I'll be honest, I don't totally hate the back train. I do wish that it correlated a little bit more in terms of color to what's going on in the rest of the dress. But I like the idea of a back train that sort of flows out right from the top of the back of the dress and creates a dramatic effect instead of just trying to come out from the waist and be like, oh, I'm the fun weave. No, there's like a real sort of cape element to it. I like this, I think it's pretty, I think it's easy, I think it's nice, I think it works. I'm happy. Now, there were two nights of the NMAC Gala, so we have Aaliyah Bhatt, and she is wearing Vaishali S here. Now, this is sort of like a sari sort of style, but I wouldn't say it's like a traditional sari in the sense. And I feel like we get the sari sort of element because you're sort of having this pleated wraparound little piece of fabric that comes down and creates a real asymmetrical element. Now, I believe that that asymmetrical panel of fabric is meant to be a sort of palu, which is when you look at a traditional sari, the way that the fabric drapes over from left to right on the body. It's that swag of fabric that goes around the sort of shoulder area. That's called the palu. Again, if I am saying things wrong, I am very sorry. I'm, I'm trying. But I think that it's a nice, more modern interpretation of the palu or some sort of, you know, draped element like a palu. Now, it's pretty much a opaque cocktail strapless gown that flows down. Again, sort of seems to maybe be a reference to the sorry again. I believe that there's like a petty 
coat skirt underneath of the actual gown. That's why we have that sort of flowing out of fabric rather than it just being a flat sort of surface towards the bottom. Pretty positive that's reference to the way that a sari is draped as well. There usually is like a petticoat sort of underneath and that's how you actually put elements of the sari in and then you wrap it around. And then it also sort of wicks away moisture. It's like a very interesting thing, you know. I read a little bit, it's, it's, I'm intrigued by it. I think it's cute. I really, really like the, the Palu fabric. I like the way that it's pleated like that. I like the way that it gives it a really intriguing texture. And also I like the fact that it sort of overlays over what is a little bit more simple, a little bit more boring silver fabric. I'm fine with this, this is cute. Next up we have Amrit and she is wearing Rajesh Pratap Singh. And I'm pretty positive that this floor length coat in what looks like a plaid is actually a reference to a South Indian textile called the lungi or also called the madras. I know that there seems to be like not a muddled history of the textile but I know that there's a lot of places that have colonized it, pushed it out and it's been adapted and changed all throughout the world. Pretty positive that plaid as we know it kind of originates over here or it's at least a very older cousin. Purplish in nature from my vantage point. Dark and almost reflective, almost like an oil and water and it swirls. The colors reflect in a really interesting way. I like the fact that it's like a floor length jacket. I think it's fun. I think the buttons are really, really beautiful. And the fact that Amrit also knows what she's doing is in opening the lining of the jacket to be exposed a little bit where it's that vibrant pink. And then that vibrant pink is also playing off the shoe choice here, which is again in a matching tone. And then I love whatever's going on in this like stocking pant situation where it's partially lace and then it ombres into opaque gold. It's really intriguing. I'm really into it. I think it's fun and funky and different. And honestly, is it my personal style. No. Is it something that I would normally look and be like, oh, ugly? Yes. Do I think that it really does a good job of showcasing a fabric that for a lot of Westerners, we don't really see a lot of, or we don't really know a lot about? Absolutely. And so like in that context, I'm happy to learn. And next up we have Amrit in what looks, in my opinion, to be a Saint Laurent style. I'm not really sure if it is, to be completely honest. It's just that from what I've been seeing a lot on the red carpets, the sort of hooded spice color oriented styles is what we've been seeing a lot from Saint Laurent and is very historically Saint Laurent. We can get into Algeria, the war, colonization, France. Saint Laurent had homes in Marrakesh and Morocco. Very much so was inspired by his upbringing in Algeria. Colors that were there that were usually very deep like emerald and reds and yellows like this that really are beautiful and sort of definitely are not super duper European. That's why I believe that this is Saint Laurent but I really like this version of this Saint Laurent dress if it is and if it isn't they did better than Saint Laurent. I love the fact that it exposes the side area like a rib cage moment and the fact that it flows around the head and then flows down in a cowl neck is really really beautiful. I think that texture is wonderful right sort of in the navel area and then the way that it flows down too hits the floor is good. It pools just a little bit not too much not too dramatically. A nice element to this dress that I think with a lot of the other Saint Laurent dresses you don't really see. They're usually very sort of clingy to the body. They're usually very sheer. I enjoy the fact that this is kind of opaque. I think the color really stands out here. And I think that the cowl neck element and the texture of it really is rather lovely. Next up we have Ananya Pandey and she is wearing Rahul Mishra. Rahul Mishra is sort of the Indian fashion designer that is on everybody's lips. Rahul is shown during Haute Couture now in Paris, bringing that Indian flair to the Parisian runways, which I don't think has really been done. From my understanding, it could have been. I just didn't know about it. I think it's really lovely to see that Rahul is sort of really being pushed, and we've been seeing a lot of him on the carpets. So we can see that this is a strap and embellished and embroidered gown. It has a little sort of waist cut out on both sides, but I do have to say that the way that that silver embroidery looks from the vantage point, it's nice. It looks beautiful. It looks like it has real sort of detail and essence. It looks sort of foliagey inspired and things like that. Again, the reflection of the light off of it makes it hard to really tell that, but from what I can see, it looks like there's a lot of, a lot of work that's going in there. So at the waist, we can see a drop waist effect happens and this big 3D applique skirt flows out. It's a black background and then muted gold foliage or mushrooms or ornaments or I don't know really what they are, but they sit on top in this really gorgeous way. It almost looks like an antique shop. Like it's just cluttered with beautiful gold pieces of whatever 
weakness is going on. And I think that from the other looks that we've seen on red carpets previously, that take from this style, and it, this is a sort of very Rahul Mishra style recently that I've been seeing, it really has like a nice, intriguing, antique quality to it. And it's something that I think has been kind of fascinating. Normally, I'd say you're suturing just a random top with a random skirt together, and that usually looks kind of bad. But there's something about the way that the gold flows, and it goes from spring much of bearing the body to very full voluminous skirt that it kind of works there's there's a weird sort of flow energy here that seems to capture things well so I'm intrigued I like it next up we have Deepika Padukone and Ranveer Singh now let's talk about Deepika first she is wearing an Anamika Kana look honestly really gorgeous and very highly embellished and encrusted suit going on it's a wide leg pant it's like a silver and gold and I feel like we're seeing a lot of sort of silver and gold embroideries and embellishments going on something about the color even though it's kind of meant to be like flashy and poppy and things like that there's like a muted element to it which I actually kind of enjoy it doesn't like force itself to be bright and vibrant over the top rather it just kind of does its nice little embellishment experience a nice suit it looks like it fits well we can see it's a sort of white sheer cape that is floor length and creates a train but it seems to be trimmed in encrustments and embellishments and also there's a sort of detail and motif on the back of it as well but there seems to be a lining that creates some sort of flow between what's going on in the suit and what's going on on the cape and honestly, like, I think it's cute. Listen, I like the fact that, again, like you can do embellishments and encrustments and things like that. And it doesn't have to be wowie, kazawi, oh my god, crazy, sweet 16 prom vibe. It can be rather muted and serene and gentle. Now, as for Ranveer Singh, he is wearing this white or I would say ivory silk jacket with a linen sort of pant in white and some sort of silk shirt underneath. Now, this jacket is actually called a Sherwani from my understanding, and it's a sort of structured coat that you see it can be paired over things like a kurta. I love it. I love the fact that there's this beautiful floral detail sort of woven into the silk. I think it really looks wonderful. I think it adds matte element to a very sheeny and shiny textile. I love the fact that you have a little bit of, I don't know if it's fraying or if it's meant to sort of be like braided at the bottom, but I think it again adds like a little intrigue, a little interest, something memorable. It doesn't feel like it's just a long jacket that's falling. I like it as well. I think they do a good job here of like somewhat matching. We attempted. I kind of like both of these looks a lot. I feel like everybody's gonna be mad at me because I'm being like nice, but like I'm just, I don't want to like put any toes out of line. Now next up we have Emma Chamberlain and he or she is wearing Faiguni Shane Peacock. Now this is a crop top style in yellow. It is embellished and embroidered. We can see that there's almost like, I want to call it a smocking detail, but I don't think it actually is a smocking. It looks to be some sort of like hive trellis motif. And then there's little sort of layers of trim that create a little fringe effect as you move down the sleeve. She's wearing honestly like a very Emma sort of usual crop top paired with a high-waisted skirt. And honestly, the embellishments sort of run all throughout. I think the bra seems to not fit a whole lot. We can see there's a little bit of space going on. I do like the shoulder detail. It's not super crazy, but it's a nice subtle puff. And then the high-waisted skirt, I think it's okay. I don't think it necessarily correlates super duper well in terms of embroidery and embellishment to what's going on on the sleeves. But I get it. I think the color use is smart. I think the little trim of feathers on the bottom around the hem is nice. I think it fits her pretty good except for that bra area. I I'm fine with this. I'm not mad about it. But then Emma also showed up in another look, which is a halter style gown by Rahul Mishra. It's essentially made up of what looks like to be like a mint green cascade of panels that are sort of cut almost to look like leaves or feathers or foliage or something like that. And they sort of flow down the entirety of the gown. And as we get to around, I'd say like the hip area, they start to jut out a little bit more. I like the concept. You have the green. I think it's really, really beautiful. I like the idea of having the sort of applique of these little panels. I think there's something though about the actual fit of it, again, like in the waist area, and I think around the hips, that it just falls kind of flat. It doesn't really do much, it's just sort of a dress. And I think that if you put the dress on a hanger, you put the dress on Emma, it would feel a little bit lackluster. And I think that that's just genuinely like a tailoring issue. I think it could have just fit better. I think it could have been a little bit more flattering. I think it really could have emphasized body. I understand that again, like these sort of panels of fabric, it's hard to do that. So like, I get it. But at the same time, I do think that it just sort of falls, even though there are elements of it that are raised. It's a weird conundrum that I'm still trying to understand. 
Next up, we have Gigi Hadid, and she is wearing a Rahu Mishra full experience. It is a fully embroidered and embellished coat. It falls to around the shin, and then the, I believe that there's a skirt underneath, or it's a pair of pants. I can't really tell. I mean, listen, Rahu Mishra, again, shows on the couture schedule. If there is ever evidence of the beauty of Indian handwork and, and embroidery, I mean, like, this this would be it. The level of detail, if we start at the top, there's this like beautiful skyline of pinks and beige and little purples and silvers and whites. It's gorgeous. And then as we round about the waist area, we can see that there's like this beautiful landscape. There's fields that are full of colors like red and teal and pink and orange. Trying to figure out if Rahul Mishra took one of the buttons that's right next to that, what looks to be like a mountain to me, and made that the sun because it's a little orange button. And like the other button that's right next to it is white, even though there's lines going through it. And I'm wondering like if there was some sort of reference to that being the sun and incorporating the button as a part of the motif, which I'm like, if that's the case, brilliance, brilliance, icon, wonderful. As we move on down, we can see that there are more fields. There's blue, and then we can see that there's this beautiful foliage of all different flowers. I mean, I can't name the flowers because I'm not really the best at it, but it looks like there's poppies and hyacinths and, and things like that. But it's just, it's an amazing, amazing embroidery. Like hats off the Rahul Mishra team. Like fantastic it's beautiful like you could you could really stare at it for hours because it really does tell a story it's very rare i'm sort of oh my god wow this embroidery is so amazing but like i would put this embroidery in the same league as 13th century catholic monk or nun embroidery that was shown during the catholic imagination exhibition at the met like that was a moment where I looked at this beautiful embroidery. I don't think you were allowed to photograph it. I think there are very few photos of it. it. It was majestic. It was really something that I was like, holy shit, I can't believe people did this. And then they did it in like 1200 AD. But I would say that this sort of embroidery, I wouldn't say it's on that level, but I think it's definitely up there. Again, I congratulate the team on this because like you're really telling a story through the clothing. You're letting the clothing also incorporate itself into the way that the story is told. The construction of it, the use of the buttons, just the gorgeous sort of way that the eye moves down, like it's really, it's a beautiful look. And the next look that we have is a full sari look, I believe that is by Abu Jani Sandeep Kosia. I mean, holy Toledo, it's miraculous. A gold encrusted top, like presume that this is all embroidery and embellishments and it's amazing. Like this seems to be a gold sort of plunge. And then there's a sleeve crop top in and of itself going on here. And the sleeve is all sort of trimmed in this gold tasselage. And now in my head, I'm like, oh my God, this looks like a pot of gold landed on Gigi Hadid. And normally I would say, mm. in this context, the way that it's done, it, it's beautiful. It's stunning. Like it's really, it's, it's majestic. And then this gorgeous, gorgeous perforated, I don't even know what the color really is. I want to call it a beige, but it's not a beige. It's almost like a light lemon. It's, I don't know what it is, but the way that it's draped and there's trims of this gold embroidery and, you know, the palu sort of wraps around her shoulder, you know, the gold bangles, like she looks, she looks amazing. She looks ethereal. I think this is like a great example of the beauty of Indian dress and, you know, why it is so ravishing, why it is so wonderful, why it is so much so something that is constantly sort of reference and constantly inspiration is taken from it. And also I think if we look a little bit closer, just want to say, remember earlier I was talking about the fact that you can tuck the fabric into the petticoat that's underneath the actual sari element. You can see that sort of tuckage going on right there. Amazing, wonderful, iconic. Next up we have Janvi Kapoor and she's wearing Manish Malhotra. It's pretty much a strapless ball gown that has a sort of black background with it looks like to me an art deco-y aesthetic. I just think the way that it's a lot of linear sort of lines that are coming in. You have these little chevron sort of styles that jut up and then you have little sort of lines that go in between each of the chevrons. And then it flows into a mermaid element, just flows all the way down. And there's a big sort of shawl wrapped around. It doesn't really correlate in terms of color, the black and what looks like to be either the gold or the silver, I think it's silver. This has a more dusty quality to it in terms of what's going on in the shawl. From my understanding, I don't think it's inspired by anything particularly Indian culture wise. I know that Manish Malhotra is an Indian designer, but it's just kind of blah, it's kind of lackluster. I'm all for like big, beautiful lines that, you know, sculpt and contour the body. I just don't think here even that's being done. I think if we look at that first line, it cuts right into the bust area and then goes along the waist. But then as we can see, the second area sort of hits right around the mid stomach area and wraps around the hips. And it doesn't really contour the body in any way that 
is helpful or wonderful. The only part that's really kind of nice is the way that the chevron leads into this mermaid skirt. I don't think it fits poorly, but I just think the design is lackluster at best. And I think also the elements of incorporating the motifs to accentuate the body in different ways is not happening. Next up, we have Karina Kapoor Khan and Saif Ali Khan. Now, I believe that Karina is wearing Anjul Bandari. This look, I believe, is a lehenga. The lehenga is a floor-length skirt, and it's usually worn with sort of like a crop top style, from my understanding. And I believe it originated in the Mughal era and then became very much so a popular style, not only with royalty and nobility, but also sort of among the cultural masses. You do see a lot of like lehenga styles, which is that big beautiful ball skirt. We can see that the bra crop top style is red. It has little what looks to be in trellis embroidery to me, just that sort of trellis motif running throughout. Nothing really super specific or intriguing. And then the skirt, from what I can see, has a sort of floral motif running throughout it. It's not super duper apparent. You really have to kind of look up close and you see little flowers and petals and things like that. It's a beautiful sort of style, again, like culturally, historically. I love it. It's great. But at the same time, it's kind of blah and it looks beautiful. The construction of it is gorgeous, but I think from like a look perspective, it falls flat. It's a red embroidered lehenga, you know what I mean? Like I feel like we've seen it all before. Could have been a little bit more exciting. Now I'm pretty positive that Saif is wearing a Kurta sort of pajama style. We can see that this vest has two pockets. It's white, it's very creamy. There's a white sort of Kurta shirt underneath from my understanding, which explains the sort of length of the shirt. And then we have a pair of very, ill-fitting pants. I think my issue is, listen, like, I like a Kurta sort of style set. I think they work. I think they're really beautiful. They're culturally gorgeous. But at the same time, like, it should fit. You know what I mean? Like, those pants, a travesty. They're not good. We all know they're not good. And I just think that if they maybe been a little bit cleaner, it would have helped to pull the look off a little bit. I think with the shoes, I don't get it. It's, it's a brown leather brogy sort of style. It's not that cute. In my humble opinion, could have stepped it up a little bit, Saif, you know? Next up, we have Charisma Kapoor, and she is wearing Rahu Mishra. It's a strapless embroidered gown that utilizes embroidery to tell a gorgeous story. We can see that the black starting at the bust with a slight curved plunge of the fact that we can't really see where the waist seams are. It fits really, really well in that context. And then again, the embroidery, it's beautiful. Like, it's really, it's majestic. It's gorgeous. There's so much going on. It looks like temples and buildings and things like that. There are beautiful sort of flowers and foliage that honestly it look it looks amazing. Rahul Mishra knows how to do a beautiful embroidery without a doubt. I think that's why he's become such a hot commodity when it comes to the Paris Haute Couture schedule and I think this is just another nice example like it fits well and it lets the embroidery tell the story that's all you kind of need. Next up we have Kushi Kapoor and she's wearing Falguni Shane Peacock. I love this. I think this is beautiful. Honestly, it's gorgeous. It's in a demure beige and then there is gold embroidery that runs all throughout it. We can see beautiful floral embroidery that runs throughout it and there is a space that is most definitely spaced out compared to the rest of the embroidery where we can see a little bit of an actual flower. And then we have a floor length skirt. Again, floral embroidery runs throughout it. It's not super duper discernible, I would say, just because it's quite heavy and terms of embroidery. It looks nice, it fits well, and then I think the thing that really makes it super exciting, makes it really stand out, is the fact that you have this sort of halter style wrap around chiffon shawl that creates an off the shoulder yet at the same time cold shoulder effect and then falls down and creates a little bit of a train. I love it. I think it adds to different dimension to the look and I think at the same time it doesn't feel like it's just a shawl that's draped around. Rather it's still a part of the look. It still incorporates itself. The embroidery is the same. The fact that the chiffon matches the colors that is going on in the bra sort of style as well. I think it all works. I think it honestly looks beautiful. The drape adds a totally different sort of feeling and texture. To the look as well. I think that this is like radiant and beautiful and magical and I'm very into it. Next up we have Kriti Sanon and she is wearing Monisha Jaising and listen I appreciate the look from a historical context. I think that the motif that we're seeing looks like beautiful jacquards of old times. I think the black really really work super duper well together. I think that the gold really pops off of the black. It's actually rather phenomenal. And I think when you look at the skirt from around the waist area down to the hem, you can really see the beauty of that motif. It is gorgeous. I don't know if this is actually like a jacquard or not, but if it is like somebody wove that, it's, it's really stunning. It's really, really gorgeous. The thing that I think loses me, although I do kind of appreciate, is taking this sort of more traditional historic textile that 
has history, has sort of cultural context, but sort of trying to modernize it by doing a little wrap diagonal asymmetrical neckline and bra style and all of that. It's where it loses me. I get it. I understand it. I think it's cool. And I think it's wonderful that we're trying to do that. We're trying to give this textile a little bit more of a modern edge. And I think that to a degree for certain people, this works. And do I think that here this look fits her well? Yeah, so it, it does work. But for me personally, from a personal perspective, I don't really get the wrappings. It's a strange technique. I think this context, it meets the requirements of trying to modernize this, again, historic textile sort of style. It's okay. It's not for me. I'm not super duper mad about it. Another look that we have is a Kriti Sanon look that is by Valentino. It is a red floor length shirt dress that is paired with a red panta sort of shoe and a red Valentino V logo bag. I don't know. Personally, I think it's kind of blah. I think it doesn't really excite. It doesn't really interest. It doesn't really do much. I think the fit of it is okay. I think the way that it fits around the sort of under bust area works. The sleeve with the very long cuff, for me, I don't really understand constructionally. I just, I think it feels strange and odd. It's too long. And then the panta shoe, I don't think it works. I think there's times that a panta shoe can work, 100%, without a doubt. We love to see them on occasion, but they really have to fit super well. Otherwise, it looks kind of awkward and weird. And I just don't know if Valentino is the panta shoe kind of brand. I would leave those alone. I would leave most of this alone, to be honest. Next up, we have Law Roach, who's wearing Rahul Mishra. Now, Law is wearing a full haute couture look. I believe that it is a long jacket with a matching skirt. And again, I think the thing that's really interesting when you look at Rahul Mishra is the continuation of the embroidery storyline and motif from whatever is on top, whether it's like a tunic or a jacket, and the way that that carries on in whatever is below it, whether that's a pair of pants or a skirt. I think it's really intriguing. I think a lot of designers don't usually do that. They let the jacket be the focal point, and that's what's really super exciting and wonderful and fun. And then the skirt sort of just hangs below. It's usually more background or sometimes they try to make it you know an exciting part and it really doesn't work then but I think the fact that Rahul Mishra creates looks that are fully storytelling throughout both of the garments here really works I think again the color black with these really really beautiful vibrant gorgeous embroideries of these very large flowers too which I think like that's another thing like those are big flowers it takes time to do embroidery like that it's not easy I love getting to see it again I think it just showcases Rahul Mishra's creativity and the beauty of Indian handcraft and embroidery. Next up, we have Marina Rui Barbosa, and she is wearing John Batista Valley. And I mean, like, I'm gonna be honest, this is a look and a half. This is like John Batista Valley at its finest. This fully sleeved ball gown with gorgeous embroidery in this sheer fabric that's fully crystallized. I love it. I just think the shape of it is gorgeous. I think the embroidery just adds this really wonderful, exciting moment. It captures so much. I know that it's a flowers, but at first I thought it was like peacocks and I was like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. But then you see those beautiful little pink and yellow flowers and you're like, oh, it's lovely. I like the way that it goes. Yellow, pink, yellow, pink, yellow, pink. The green really overtakes and I think that it works. The green sort of embroidery right around the waist area to help hide the way that the, the dress sort of fans out in skirt form. Like it's a look. You know what I mean? Like this is, if I was to say it, like a look, like a L-E-W-K. It's jaw dropping. It's the first time in a long time I was like, oh, okay, we're doing it. Got it. She crushed this. She destroyed it. She broke it in her bare hands. <laughs> it's amazing. Next up, we have Natasha Punawala, and she is wearing Sabayasachi. It's a, again, black floor length ball gown with floral embroidery, really light, delicate, beautiful embroidery. And then there's a feather cape that juts out of it with a whole lot of necklaces going on at the neck area, which I actually kind of like. I like that big chunky necklace and the feather pour out of it. If you're going to do like opulent, do it. Honestly, like I kind of like the look. I don't know if the feather cape and the dress were meant to go together, but if they were, wonderful. If they weren't, good styling here. I just think that it adds a nice lightness on top. It doesn't really take away from the gown, strangely. The one thing I will say I don't love is the bag. I don't know if we needed the side clutch to sit in front on a full length ball gown. Like I know somebody could have held it while you got the pictures taken. You know what I mean? Like we just, it wasn't, it wasn't necessary. It wasn't needed. And then the one other element is that waist sash with the, the, the tiger on it. Again, I just think it throws off the look. It doesn't really make sense to me. I don't really get where it's coming in there. Listen, I know that the Indian tiger is a thing. I watch documentaries, but 
where is it fitting into the feathers on the cape and the the floral beautiful embroidery like a tummy because I missed it I'm I missed it personal bag waist belt eliminate and I'd be like oh great wonderful I think it's nice though regardless I just think certain elements should have most definitely been reconsidered now here she's wearing scaparelli which I think many of you will recognize but she's also wearing Abu Jani Sandeep Hosia which is another brand based out, I believe, based out of India. And that dress is sitting underneath of this very large Scaparelli jacket. Let's talk about the dress underneath by Abu Jani Sandeep Kosia. It's a little keyhole cut out in the center and then flower embroidery wrapped around waist detail. And then it just goes into full, big, beautiful embroidery and all of that Indian splendor and glory. I mean, the way that it creates these little pots and windows and it's really really gorgeous i don't know that much about it but i do know that it's beautiful i think that's kind of the most important part you know what i mean i just think that that gold and black really really works together and then honestly to give natasha a lot of credit and her styling team here the fact that we're wearing these knee-high scaparelli chopin boots they're black leather we can see on the front they're gold sort of toed and they're raised now the thing is these are based on chopins which were like 13th, 14th century European shoes that pretty much kept like the shit and dirt off of your feet. And so like it wouldn't actually touch your feet and they were raised little sort of heels, but they didn't have like a stiletto heel. Rather, they were like heeled in the center. It was like a weird platform. And now I believe the jacket is from an haute couture season, maybe last season, maybe two seasons ago. That was all about astrology and astronomy. It's Daniel Roseberry's finest in terms of big hood that wraps around the head and really creates an emphasis there. The gold embroidery all throughout is it's magnificent. It's radiant. The jacket really, really works with the dress. Honestly, somehow they just they pair really, really well together. And I think it's the fact that the black and gold embroidery of the Sabaya Sachi dress is gorgeous. And then the fact that Scaparelli as a brand historically has always really found a home in black with gold embroidery as well. And so I think that Natasha Punawala's team, whoever styled this, did a very, very good job and understood what was going on both on the Scaparelli side and the Sabayasachi side because it's hot. I like it. Then we have the queen herself, Nita Mukesh Ambani, and she showed up in an Abu Jani Sandeep Kosia look. It's not the most radiant, not the most memorable, not the most opulent look. But I think at the same time, she was like, listen, it's not really about me and being philanthropic by not taking center stage and the whole experience. There seems to be a gold fitted dress underneath and then a caftan style that's fully embroidered in a much more sort of muddled gold. It's full of gorgeous motifs of mirrors and triangles and petals and flowers and all these sorts of things. I do like the sort of caftan -y vibe to the cloak jacket. I like the fact that there's a slit sort of sleeve that juts out and it really gives a sort of monastic matriarchal element and motif to the look, the way that she's carrying herself. Next year, a little bit more of a pot would be great, Miss Ambani. She looks very, very, very radiant and, and opulent. You know, a little bit more fun never hurts. Next up we have Porna Jagannathan and she is wearing Gucci. I believe that this is a custom look. It's a high collared jacket dress. It's like a coat dress. It's pretty short. It goes to right above the knee and it's in a very creamy white I think it might be some sort of cotton, but the intriguing element isn't really the jacket in and of itself. Rather, it's the sort of half capelet that sort of juts out from her right side. Now, if we look closer to the neckline, we can see that it's actually pleated and the pleats are, they're honestly beautifully done. Like you can see the way that they fall. They roll right off of the shoulder. It's really, really rather gorgeous. And in reality, the look really lets that sort of pleated half capelet take sort of control, be the center area, and I'm into it. It might have some sort of cultural significance, I'm not exactly sure, but either way, it is a really beautiful, well done coat dress by Gucci. The heels, I'm okay with, I think that it's fine. It done like a knee high, I would get it, but also I think the length is good, it showcases the legs, I'm fine with that. But I think the thing that's really of intrigue as well is like the jewelry up top. I know that there's some jewelry that goes around the ears and there's this beautiful nose ring. I always think of her as the mom from Never Have I Ever, like very stern and strict. So here I feel like there's a real sort of youthfulness, there's a real sort of intrigue and interest, there's excitement and dynamicism, like I'm into it. I think that that is what an actor does. So next up we have Priyanka Chopra and Nick Jonas. Now Nick Jonas is wearing a black suit 
suit. We can see that it's honestly a pretty nice looking suit. The baggy pants I'm into. I think the length of the jacket works. I think Nick is pulling it off. The fact that it's open, we can also see there's some sort of lace shirting detail going on underneath the jacket is intriguing. It's a little different. I'm not obsessed with it, but I don't hate it. And I feel like for menswear, that's an accomplishment at this point. Now, as for Priyanka, I'm not exactly sure who actually designed the dress, but we can see that it is a strapless, beaded and bedazzled and embellished bodysuit that has a sheer skirt panel that flows out over top. And I have to say it does do it pretty well. Normally I'd be like, oh, it's a bodysuit and a scrap of fabric thrown around the body, blech. But weirdly enough, I think the way that the fabric is overlaid on the bodysuit. It actually does not give away the fact that it's sort of coming from that area. And I think that that's rather nice. Subtle continuation of the embellishments flowing down the skirt, just, just slightly, I think also keeps the whole continuity element going. The one thing that I don't love is the, the faux petal froth that's coming out of her neck um, and creating a sleeve area. I just don't think that it is super exciting. I don't think it makes sense with the rest of the look. I also just think it looks kind of odd and frothy and weird. The one thing I will say is pocket. Who knew that your bodysuit with, you know, skirt attached could have a pocket like that? I didn't, but I love it. I think that's the most dynamic element of the look, to be completely honest. Next up, we have Sarah Ali Khan, and she is wearing Manish Malhotra. Listen, again, we're back to like black with gold embroidery and details. It's beautiful. The plunging neckline is really, really nice. The bra underneath, I think it's fine. It doesn't detract too, too much. The floor length element is stunning, to be completely honest. I think that the embroidery in and of itself is just miraculous. Again, like you can't really be beautiful Indian embroidery. I've Googled and I've since learned, I believe that this motif is called the Banarasi silk or Uttar Pradesh and is usually a brocade, I believe. It's beautifully done. Like it really, you can't beat it. It's authentic. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. The length of it is wonderful. The way that it fits her, I think is miraculous. Like it's just, it's a beautiful motif. It's a beautiful dress. I don't think you could put anybody in it and it would look bad. Next up we have Shinanya Kapoor and she is wearing Valentino. I believe that this is a Valentino haute couture look. We can see that it's a white silk button up or button down shirt. And then there's a high-waisted gold embroidered skirt attached. My thing is I get it. Like I'm sure the gold embroidery has homage and heritage to Indian culture, Indian textiles. I just don't think it's really that dynamic. I don't think it's really that exciting. I don't think it's really memorable. It just feels kind of blah. What I do think is rather interesting is the jewelry going on. The fact that they found something that really like works and sort of plays within the confines of that plunge. I think the big bangles are also amazing. The bag, you know, not for me, but the gold, I get it. It all works together. But overall, it just falls kind of flat. The way that the shirt is tucked into the skirt is looking. It just doesn't feel well done or exciting or flowing. And then the skirt in and of itself just kind of falls flat when you put it against a lot of the other skirts that we've seen thus far. Next up we have Shweta Bachchan and she is wearing Abu Jani Sandeep Kosia. Listen, I love this. The red and the gold play off of each other so, so beautifully. I believe that this is another lehenga, which again, full length, beautiful skirt. I mean, the embellishment on that, the embroidery on that, it's miraculous. The red as the backdrop is dynamic, it's beautiful, it's lovely. And then the gold really plays off of it so, so well. I think the fact that you have all these little mirrored squares that run along the length, these like sun, like motifs that go all throughout. It's gorgeous. I think also it's a fun play on the fact that if these are suns, which I believe they are, sun reflects light and it, or I guess it pushes light. And so it's a cool way of utilizing, not a textile per se, but materials to, again, tell the story of what you're trying to look into. I think that the bra, is great, I think it's cute. I think that the half sort of sun detail on the bra is cool, it works. The fact that you have this big sort of beautiful shawl that goes over as well, it just encapsulates the rest of the look. I'm very into it, she looks stunning. It's a gorgeous piece of work. I'm happy. Next up we have Sonam Kapoor and she is wearing Abujani Sandeep Kosia as well. Now here we have I don't know if this is a lehenga. I don't want to say it is because I'm not really sure, but whatever the skirt is, it's big, it's bold, it's beautiful, it's stunning. It looks like each of the godets in the skirt, in reality, sort of have different foliage motifs that run throughout. It goes from a maroon to an orange to maroon to red. It's stunning. It's beautiful. And again, I think these kinds of things 
we can zoom in and we can really be like, oh, wow. But I think also in person, it, it totally changes the game when you see these things in real life, it sort of transforms even more so. But I think from the photos, it's a whole lot, but it's a whole lot of goodness, I think. That's the other thing. There's a real beauty to it. I love the way that you have the stripes that trim the hem. You have the borders that go and sort of create stripes along the bottom of the dress. The gold up top in the strapless bra element, it's not trying to take a whole lot of space up. It's letting the skirt do its thing. The shawl, same thing. That skirt is a masterpiece. Like, I just think that besides Paris, India takes the cake when it comes to embroidery. Like, the girls... The girls can't touch it. Sorry. Next up, we have Tamana Bhatia, and she is wearing Manish Malhotra. This one I do not love. Listen, I understand that there's like a sorry sort of detail going on. We have this strapless floor length gown, fabric reflective, it's gold, it's beautiful. The sorry ish detail kind of wraps around and creates like that palu effect that flows into a big long skirt. Lace detail, I don't love. I just think it throws it off a little bit. There's something about it that just doesn't catch. It just doesn't land. It feels a little bit, not dominatrixy, but it's certainly strange, I think, against the backdrop of the dress. I also just don't think the dress in general is really like so amazing, so wonderful. It's a reference to a sari, I'm sure, which is great. But at the same time, like, not all references are great references. The shoes, they're fine, but again, I just think the way that the dress tapers down as well is it's an awkward fit. Embroidery motifs that are going on on the right side, again, weird, doesn't really make sense, I don't really get it. The whole thing just feels a little bit off to me. Next up we have Tom Holland. Listen, I like Tom, but like, boring. Boring, boring. Babe, wear a kurta, wear a sherwani, like wear something of intrigue, something of interest, something memorable. Like you're here at the Indian Cultural Center. Maybe try some Indian culture, that would be great. Next up we have Zendaya, she's wearing Rahul Mishra. That was kind of the moment where everybody was like, Luke, you have to talk about this. And I was like, all right. This I believe is a custom Rahul Mishra look. It is a floor length skirt with a sari sort of embroidered detail that runs around, flows into a big long train. Do I love this look? Controversial opinion, but like, no, I don't. I don't really think it's that radiant. I don't really think it's that magical. I think that it's a high-waisted skirt with a sort of sorry detail and Zendaya is gorgeous and then she's also in India. Bing bang boom. The story writes itself. I just don't really feel that at least here in the sorry so asymmetrical detail, it just doesn't feel great. I think the wraparound and then you have that taut piece of fabric that creates like a train. It just looks kind of awkward and kind of weird. I don't really get it. I do love the embroidery of the actual blue elements though. I think it's really beautiful. Again, I think we can see that this detail is the star and there's little stars and silver that jut out. And then again, like the floral motif at the bottom. Normally I'd be like, yeah, I love it because I feel like a lot of the Rahu Mishra looks that we've talked about, I'm like, I love it. But even these, I think they fall a little bit flat. Zendaya, gorgeous, absolutely 100%, always, whatever, you could put her in a sack, and I'd be like, oh, she's done. But the dress in and of itself, I think there are much better Rahul Mishra looks that most definitely could have been tapped for this moment, because that's not my favorite Zendaya. And last but not least, we have Zinnia Kumar. I don't know what she's wearing, but I just know that I like it. The bra top in the gold is gorgeous. The floral motif runs all along it. The foliage, it's stunning. The pants, again, I don't know what's going on with the pants, but I like them. I think it's fun. And then the way the drapey shawl hangs off the body, it's good. It works for me. I'm into it. That is the end of our 2023 NMAC Gala Fashion Roast and Review. Let's talk about best and worst. So for best, I'm going to put both of Gigi Hadid's looks on there because those are stun. Putting Kushi Kapoor on there, Marina Rui Barbosa and the John Batista Valley. I'm gonna put Natasha Punawala in there, but the one that was the Abu Jani, Sandeep Kosia, and the Scaparelli put together because like styling well done. Shweta Bakchan in that Abu Jani, Sandeep Kosia look as well. And then also Sara Ali Khan in that Manish Malhotra moment. Oh, 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 and Sonam Kapoor in the Abu Jani, Sandeep Kosia, that skirt memorable. As for worst, Tom Holland, boring, blah, banal. Emma Chamberlain, at least that's that Rahul Mishra look, I was not a fan. Kriti Sanon in that, that Valentina was not great either. Who else? Tamana Bahatia, that Manish Malhotra look, also like not my favorite. Shania Kapoor, mm, 
yeah. So yeah, there are some undesirable moments, most definitely. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys want me to do this again next year, definitely will. I actually really enjoyed it and I felt like I learned a lot. Thank you again. I will see you on the next one. And TTYL.